Okay, this is going to be a video where we discuss uh, what is called direct proofs. So we're going to do at least two examples of direct proofs. So a direct proof, um, we're going to use it to prove a statement of the form P implies Q. That's the, going to be the uh, statement form that we're going to prove. And to prove uh, a statement like this, which can be written like this as well, so if P and Q, what you do is you assume P is true, so you assume P, and then you, you show Q is true, right? You show Q is true uh, via uh, some steps. Okay, so I have a, a, a problem here we can do. Um, it says that the, the sum of two odd integers is even. Now, when you first look at this statement, um, it, it's not really an, an if P then Q. So we, you can reword it if you wanted to. So I'll put it in parentheses. You could say something like if M and N are odd, then M plus N is even. That's really what we need to prove. We're here, M and N uh, are integers. Now, how much detail you show in these proofs varies. Everyone writes their proofs differently. So keep that in mind when you're looking at books. Uh, books will write their proofs differently, people on the internet. Uh, my advice is show as many steps as you can and be as detailed as you can. Okay, so here in this example, this is gonna be the P part and this is the Q part. So if P, then Q. So let's go ahead and go through the proof. So proof. Now, before we do the proof, I have to tell you what it means uh, for integers to be even and odd. So there's definitions involved and that's really, really important. And it's really important that those are memorized always. So I'm gonna write those up here. So first we'll define odd. And here again, M and N are integers. So, an integer m is odd if there exists an integer k such that, st means such that, m is equal to 2k plus 1. So that's the definition of an odd integer. We say m is odd if we can write it in this form, m equals uh, 2k 2k plus 1. Uh, in a very similar fashion, we can define even. So we can say an integer n is even if, and you can use shorthand for some of these things. I'm purposely avoiding it. There exists an integer k such that n equals 2k. In other words, it's a multiple of 2. So that's the definition. Uh, for even and the definition for odd. And so, so it's odd if you can write it as m equals 2k plus 1. It's even if you can write it as n equals 2k. All right. And again, th th this is an easy proof, but it's more about the structure. You really want to have the structure down 100%. Um, very key. Okay. So this is an if p then q statement. So we're going to start by assuming that m and n are odd. So suppose m and n are odd. And again, we'll, we'll just assume they're integers, right? So we're only talking about integers here. I'll, I'll say it integers just to be a little more precise. So what does that mean? So now you have to show that m plus n is even, right? That's what you have to show. You have to show p, q is true. But you can't just go there. Usually there's a step involved. So this is what I like to call a, a one-way proof. So most undergraduate mathematics proofs are one-way proofs. You basically write something down and then you say, okay, what does that mean? Is there a theorem I can use or a proposition? Or in this case, is there a definition? There is a definition, right? We know what the definition of an odd integer is. So let me just say, this means, let's be really clear. What does this mean? This means, right? You, you could say then, right? You can say then if you want to, but um, if you want to be even more precise, you can say this means, or by definition, that's even better, right? You can say by definition, let's do that. By definition, 
of odd, this means, right? So, you know, how precise can you be? And again, how precise do you have to be, right? It, it just depends on how precise you want to be, right? <laughs> so this means there exists integers. Let's just call them K and L such that, I'll even spell it, M is equal to 2K plus 1 and n is equal to 2l plus 1. All right, so again, what have we done? We assumed uh, that p was true, right? Remember, to prove a, a p implies q statement, we assume p is true if the show q is true. So we did that here. This is our assumption of p. Suppose p is true, right? This is, this is our p right here. m and n are odd integers. By definition of odd, this means there exist integers k and l such that we can write them this way. So now we can look at the sum, m plus n. We have to show it's even. In other words, we have to show it's a multiple of two. So then, so then we can look at the sum, m plus n. Well, what is m? m is 2k plus 1. I'll put it in parentheses. Plus n is 2l plus 1. And you can use properties of addition here, uh, the commutative property, the associative property. You don't have to go berserk and bonkers and insane to show all the steps here for something like this. You can pretty easily combine things. You can see here that this is going to be 2k plus 2l. So it's going to be 2k plus 2l plus 2. And now look at this. All of these terms in the sum have what? A factor of 2. So you can write this as 2 times k plus l plus 1, right? And you can check that. 2k, 2l plus 2. Where k plus l plus 1 is an integer. And you might say, why is it an integer? So here's where you have the option to be even more precise. You can say it's an integer because the integers are closed under addition. That means that if you take any two integers, uh, any two elements in the set of integers, which are integers, and you add them, you get another element in that set, which is also an integer. When that happens, when you have that property where you take two elements of a set and you add them and you get another element in that set, that's called closure, okay? So the integers are closed under the operation of addition, right? So, so again, uh, you have three integers here. So, there, you know, it's closed under addition. You can do it in steps. K plus L is an integer because K and L are integers. So this is an integer. And then this plus this is an integer uh, because, again, closure. So you're basically using closure twice. Again, you don't have to go crazy there, but it's important to understand all the steps. Um, okay, so I'll just say that. And I won't say it's closed. I said it in words. Uh, you don't really always have to say that, especially in a proof at this level. You know, we haven't even discussed closure. But they are closed under addition, so that's why it works. Okay, so because the sum of integers is an integer. Um, and so what does this mean? m plus n is a multiple of 2, right? It's equal to 2 times k. It's not k. You could be precise and you can call it p. You can go nuts and say, oh, let p equal this, and then... Uh, m plus n is 2p, but I think this is good enough. So let me just say this is precisely the definition of what it means. For m plus n to be even. And that completes the proof. Now you could you could take it a step further. You know, you have to show that this is for all integers. So a lot of times in, in proof writing classes, they'll start the proofs by saying, suppose m and n are arbitrary odd integers. That means they could be any integer. And then at the end you say, because m and n were arbitrary, this holds for all odd integers. You know, you can do stuff like that to be even more precise. Because again, this statement is holding for all, this is true for all odd integers m and n. That's, that's the beauty of a proof, right? Uh, this is always true. And again, how you prove it depends. I actually have the proof written down here. This is from one of my books. It's a very, very small book uh, on proof writing. Very, very small. But it's got correct mathematical proofs. And, oh, look, this is perfect. Look at this. This is what I was talking about. It actually tells you here. The proofs that follow in this book are written with slightly different styles and with varying degrees of rigor. This is intentional. There is no single perfect way to write a proof. What matters most is that your reasoning is correct. Express your ideas in the way that it feels most natural to you. So you can see here, let's look at the proof in the book really quick, and then we'll do one more, because I promise we would do <laughs> at least two. 
Uh, so we'll do one more, one more, and that's it. So let M and M be odd integers, and there exist. I did it exactly the same way. That's pretty funny. A little bit shorter here at the end, since k plus l plus 1 is an integer, m plus n is even by definition. So maybe a little bit cleaner. All right, so very, very similar to what we did here, except I said a lot more in words here. Let's go ahead and do um, one more proof, because I promise we would do at least two. Uh, I don't want to bail, <laughs> be a liar. Um, let's do the next one in this book. Um, so the statement is, a statement we have to prove, it's a proposition. Prop proposition. And it says, if n is even, this one's really easy. Then 3n is even. Okay? If n is even, uh, then 3n is even. So proof. Proof, let's work through it. So again, this is our p, and this is our q. So in, a, in a, a direct proof, in the direct proof strategy, you assume p is true, and then you have to show q is true. So you start the same way. You can say assume. I'll say suppose. So suppose n is even. And then we have to show 3n is even. But just like before, now we use the definition, definition of even. So this means, let's do it a little bit differently this time. This means n equals 2k for some integer k. So you can say it this way too. This basically means there exists an integer k such that n equals 2k, or you can say n equals 2k for some integer k. You don't know what it is, it's, it's just some integer. Now we need to look at 3n. So then 3n is equal to 3 times 2k, and here you can use the associative property and the commutative property of multiplication. You don't have to show all the steps here. Um, you know, you, you could go nuts and show them. I'm just going to skip them all and write it like this. 2 times 3k. If you really wanted to go nuts, I mean, if you really wanted to go crazy, you know, and again, this is completely absurd, um, you would use associativity, then you would use uh, commutativity, and then you would use associativity again. And this is the kind of thing you only do in like... I don't know, when you're first learning about like an algebraic structure and you're, and you're studying those properties, um, like, you know, in group theory or something, or in ring theory, at the very beginning when you're first learning like the very basics and you're proving very fundamental things about the structure, that's typically when you do stuff like this. So here you use associativity. Here, so here we use associativity. Here we use commutivity. And then here we use associativity again. And then that's how, so there's a lot of stuff going on between this equal sign, right, that people take for granted, uh, especially if you're, if, you're, if you're taking a basic algebra class, you don't even think about stuff like this, right? But when you study algebraic structures, like in abstract algebra, you do have to think more deeply uh, about basic things. In any case, where 3k is an integer, and again, this is because the product of integers is an integer, and... You guessed it, that's called closure under multiplication, right? Uh, you take two integers, you multiply them, you're going to get an integer. Um, it doesn't work for division, right? 2 over 3 is not an integer. An integer. So uh, integers are not closed under division. Also, you can't divide by 0, <laughs> so it's not a problem. In any case, uh, we have 3n equals 2 times 3k, where 3k is an integer. That means 3n is a multiple of 2. This means that n is uh, 3n is even. So I'm going to say thus. It's a fun word to use. 3n is even. And that completes the proof. People like to use QED after proofs, by the way. I don't. I like to use a box with an X. Uh, the modern way, I believe, is a filled-in box. I like the box with an X. So so that's it. We did two. I promised two, and I think, uh, I think that's good. Um, so hopefully this is giving you some insight into mathematical proof writing. And again, these are called direct proofs. Um, in, in this book... It's a very small book, but it's a valuable book because um, it, you know, it has an intro. It's got direct proofs, proofs by contrapositive. That's another proof strategy. I'll try to make a video um, at some point in the future, probably about this, just just to have one for each chapter, so you get an idea of the proof methods. And then proof by contradiction. This one's really fun. You basically assume it's false, and you reach some silly conclusion. 
And then chapter five has mixed proof techniques. And this is a really good book for people who are just, just starting. I am working on more proof books. They just take a, a very long time to, to do because, you know, there can't be, I mean, math books in general, right? There, there's no mistakes. <laughs> so, um, and it's math. You know, every word matters, you know, um, like, you know, even here, right? Suppose, you know, that that's a word that is intended to be used here on purpose. Everything is with intention. Every word matters, you know, for some. You can't say for all, right? So uh, it's little stuff like that that makes mathematics uh, challenging. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out my book. I'll leave a link in the description. Check out my courses. I have courses. I have a course of set three proofs, but I also have um, courses with proofs and functions and other things. And I have calculus courses, differential equations, calc one, calc two, calc three, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, and um, some other courses um, as well. Check out my books. I have tons of math books on uh, various subjects as well. Links are all in the description. And most importantly, hopefully you learned a little bit of mathematics. Stay strong, my friends.